Are you an entrepreneur or looking to become one? Looking to stay motivated, find happiness and true success? You're in the right place. Welcome to Empower Humans. Welcome again to the Empower Humans podcast. This is episode 23. Remember the movie, the number 23 with Jim Carrey, by the way? It was all about these interesting things surrounding the number 23, including that each human being has 46 chromosomes, 23 from each parent. Uh, There were several other things about the number 23. I think that's even what Jim Carrey named his production company, 23 Productions or something like that. Jim Carrey, by the way, if you're listening, and I know you are, my friend, I need to interview you ASAP, brother. Anyway, I digress a little on this number 23 thing. I seem to have a lot to say in these early episodes about (laughs) the number of the episode, so bear with me on that. And the numbers we reach with these episodes are just little milestones along the way, but some of it may be mildly humorous or not, but uh, we're having fun and hopefully learning and growing and building great things together. That's the point of this podcast. And again, like I said, I hope we're having some fun in the process. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why you and I are who we are. We're going to talk about human needs. We're going to talk about how this all develops and how we see things and believe things. And some of this will draw on some of the things we've covered in the past, but in a more specific thing to why you and I are uh, what we are, who we are. What are all the factors that feed into that and why are you succeeding in some areas and maybe failing in others? And before we jump into that, I want to assure you that you are priceless. You are most definitely priceless. To equate your worth with any of the money or fleeting problems in this world is extremely degrading to your immense value and potential. You are priceless and you are loved. And as I say that, even if you just feel it as a little spark, that spark is real. And whatever you're going through, do not, I repeat, do not give up. I also want to assure you that you are absolutely never alone. Sometimes we people may con ourselves into believing we're alone because of some unexpected problem or difficulty that may be even hellish to to face in our lives. Maybe you have an illness or maybe a loved one who is ill or may have recently lost a family member or a pet or a relationship. Maybe you've lost a job or in some other way feel discouraged with some family relationship or financial difficulty. Trust me, you're not alone. I've gone through all that stuff in my own way, by the way. Everything I just listed, I I personally have gone through, and I suspect many of you have gone through your own versions of of many of those things and, and more. I'm not trying to list the many problems so many of us face as people, maybe discourage us in any way. I want to assure you, though, that I and many, many, many others have gone through our own versions, like I said, of every single one of those things and so many more. So again, I say to you with full purpose of heart that you are never alone. Did we make these points clear enough this time? I think so. I feel it as I say it to you and I really, really hope you feel it as well. You are priceless and you're never alone. Now, as we jump into this topic about why we are what we are, I want you to think about babies for a moment, okay? And I don't know how many of you have babies out there, but I know all of us at one time, all the people you care about or don't care about at one time were babies. Babies can teach us a lot about what we are inherently as human beings. Uh, When you were a baby, all you knew was that you were hungry and needed affection and warmth, a place to sleep, go to the bathroom, most likely in a diaper. If you were born potty trained, please contact me because I need to interview you. (laughs) Somehow, no, this is all serious though in the sense of We all have a very common thread and we were born as babies of of what we were, what we needed. And somehow you and I knew in our minds that we needed to progress. Our parents may have put, you know, put us on our tummies at some point for what they call tummy time. That's what our doctor used to call it. So we might push ourselves up gradually, uh, maybe eventually begin to crawl and eventually maybe then walk and then run. It's all a progressive process as we grow and learn and become And I watched my boys do this when they were babies. It made me excited and sad all at once for them. At first, they were uncomfortable. Then they started to get it and even started to enjoy it and play with us on their tummies before they quickly began to pull their legs underneath and crawl. Okay, They wanted to be able to be mobile on their own, to be independent. And I recognize that all of us may not have come from perfect homes and families that may or may not have nurtured these things naturally. Hopefully, they let you learn to crawl. I'm guessing the vast majority of us experience some, you know, mostly unintentional deficiencies from imperfect, but mostly well-meaning parents. And we're here to talk about 
uh, our growth and why we become who we are. We're not supposed. To, we're not necessarily going to talk about uh, some of those issues that exist individually if from our different childhood experiences and some similar experiences. Uh, but th- those sorts of things exist for just about all of us in some capacity. We're simply talking conceptually about how we progress and where we started as babies because the symbolism applies throughout our lives. Think of what you were born with. You're born with a small body, maybe 5 to 10 pounds. If you were 10 pounds or more, bless your mother's heart for enduring that. In fact, go write her a card right now. Pause this podcast uh, or feel gratitude to her if she's no longer with you. <laughs> Again, I digress. We were born naked. We were born helpless. We were born with a desire to learn and progress, as we mentioned. Babies are born with only two fears also. I think there are some deep truths to learn because of this. Those fears babies are born with are the fear of being dropped and a fear of loud noises. Okay? And so think about that. Babies will go stick their hand in a light socket or in a dog's mouth or go climb up and down stairs because they're just bold and mostly fearless. All the rest of these other fears are developed, learned fears as we progress throughout life and become older and have life experiences, some traumatic experiences, there may be some triggers. Uh, Some of them are legitimate, many of them are not, these fears that we develop. And do you have a fear of how people will react to you? Uh, Do you fear maybe the loss of love in a relationship of some sort in your life or other sorts of different types of fears and anxieties that exist? Just having that present fear is learned and also can be beneficial. Uh, It can be based, like we say, on the legitimate triggers that helped create it. Fears are important to focus on because they can be tools based on how we look at things to bring us to better places, hopefully, in our lives. Go back and listen to episode 7, by the way, of the podcast about fears and overcoming them, also using them as tools, stepping stones instead of stumbling blocks. And go look back and listen to all the episodes if you haven't yet. I may be a little biased, but I believe there are great things to learn about various topics from various life experiences and some of the interviews we've had in each and every episode. So, But go back to episode 7 in particular when it comes to fear. We had some good material there as well. Now, we'll talk more in a little bit about human needs and how we choose to meet them and how that plays into why you are who you are and what you are in your life. Uh, I wanted to share something I heard the other day. Deepak Chopra said that the body is a printout of our beliefs and our most consistent thoughts. Think of how profound that statement is. The body is a printout of our beliefs and our most consistent thoughts. So what people think in our minds most consistently is kind of what we are as people. Our body becomes that as well, believe it or not. And a lot of times we people focus on what can go wrong and whatever it is. You're trying to do something, you're trying to accomplish something, you're trying to make a connection, make a phone call in business or romance or whatever it is. Oh, what could go wrong? What kind of rejection? What kind of, oh, I could have a car accident. I better just stay home. And I'm not, again, I'm not here to minimize the burden of anxiety and fear and the things that we can experience day to day, but we don't need to focus on the worst possible outcome. More often than not, that's not going to happen. Maybe it won't be the best possible outcome, but focus on the best possible outcome. Focus your mind and try to plan for those things. A lot of times things will come together in such a way because our minds are in tune with that sort of outcome. Again, as Deepak Chopra said, the body's a printout of our beliefs and our most consistent thoughts. Think that through, ponder that. Let's talk about this fear of loss for a second. The fear of losing something valuable or some person's love or relationship in our lives. The fear of loss is mostly in my experience, unfounded. And we can dig deep about that. I hear Tony Robbins, uh, he said that we can't really lose anything. It may become transformed for various reasons, including death. And in those transformations, some elements may be lost for a time as we sojourn through this life as mortal men and women. But those transformations do not necessarily fully constitute losses. I'm going to be honest with you. Here's an example of my own life. Something that I experienced, I one time, quote, lost a vehicle, a Chevy Suburban, in fact, in a repossession situation. I had had a close business associate co-sign on the loan, and he had had to, this person had to file for bankruptcy, and I faced some of my own economic challenges with my family. Through all of that, the vehicle was repossessed. I was pretty sad about it for a time, and then I figured out some things and found another workable vehicle, which ended up being more suitable 
for us and our family and it had about half the miles on it as the other one did. It was cheaper per month, more fuel efficient, and even cheaper on insurance. And so I think we can all agree that the repossession of that Suburban ended up being kind of a more of a blessing in disguise. And again, it's very important to be very mindful of how we frame things. Is this an opportunity or a loss? Okay, is this a door slamming in our face or another door or window maybe opening for us? Is this a stumbling block or a stepping stone? I believe that how we answer these sorts of things, these questions at the core of facing life difficulties, will be instrumental in determining our ultimate destiny as people. And now we talked earlier about babies. I think it's safe to say you and I and everyone that matters to us, or even those who don't, at some point, we're all babies. Gary uh, Vaynerchuk, I don't know if you've heard of him, but if not, look him up. He sometimes goes by Gary V, V E E, uh, on social media and YouTube, etc. He has some great content out there. He always points out the odds of becoming a human being, uh, to even be that baby we talked about and, and become who you are now. The odds of that are 400 trillion to one. 400 trillion with a T as in trillion to one. He says that to, to think about that. And even if you're not currently happy, maybe with the current state of this human experience for you, we should really be grateful that we get to be human beings. He, he sometimes says that if your mom, for example, had had one more glass of wine or some other very subtle change in these, he kind of jokes around, but there's very uh, sensitive uh, details surrounding whether or not you came into existence. If any of these changes, subtle or not, had, had happened, you might not be here. But let me say to you right now and remind you, in case you haven't noticed, that you are here. You are here. You are here. And consequently, you matter. Let that sink in. You matter. Your hopes, your fears, your dreams, desires all matter. Gary says you're more likely to win the lottery of over a hundred million dollars nine times in your life than being Rick or Susan or whoever you are as your own priceless self. So it's so easy as we talk about all this, to get bogged down emotionally in terms of our own worth in this world we live in. You, you look around, you see beautiful billboards and people who seem like everything is great. Isn't it amazing how everyone's life on Instagram or Facebook is so perfect? Oh my gosh, your life and that homemade pasta meal you just ate and took a beautiful picture of and that doctored up bikini bod picture. It's so perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Give me a break. Give yourself a break. Things can be mapped out for us. You can follow some paradigm, uh, getting the right education, the student loans, the right career, getting married by such and such an age, and having 1.8 children or some other mold in life, you know, following the social media. Oh, I have to doctor up my bikini bod too. Uh, in case you haven't looked around lately, we humans did not come from molds. You have the right, and I dare say the privilege, the privilege to map out your life yourself. In order to do that properly, you have to get to know yourself. Find out what makes you tick. Find out your passions, your talents, many of which are unique to you specifically, and then see how these human needs apply. And let's talk about these human needs as we wrap up here. There's some different schools of thought on all this. Tony Robbins talks about six core human needs. And those six needs, I'll summarize and we'll talk a little bit about each one of them. And I want you to think about how you apply those in your life. And as we talk about this, uh, as he points out also, each person tends to have one or two key needs that they focus on for whatever reasons. Maybe they're compensating for something, their childhood or whatever it all is. Every situation is unique, but in some ways similar in, in how and why we do all this. But these needs are certainty, uncertainty, which kind of seem to counteract each other, but there's a way to have balance there. And we're going to talk about that. Significance, love and connection, which is one need, love and connection, growth and contribution. The first four needs are kind of defined as what we would say needs of the personality. That's what he would call it as well. And these last two uh, growth and contribution are kind of identified as needs of the spirit. Let's talk about this certainty and uncertainty thing for a second. This certainty is kind of the need for predictability, consistency, security, safety, stability, control, comfort, all these sorts of synonyms, having order in our lives, being able to depend on that job, that income. You've got food to eat. You've got a place to be. You've got people you can depend on, a spouse in particular, whatever that might be. These things kind of ebb and flow in our lives sometimes, but we have this need for certainty, and there's an important reason that that's the first on his list 
of just having certainty in our lives. And people meet these needs, by the way, in various healthy and unhealthy ways. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And you can kind of apply that in your own world. Oh, how am I doing this? The other thing we talked about, uncertainty. That's kind of a need for variety. It's a need for surprise and maybe spontaneity, excitement, uh, adventure, difference, different things going on. So we need that as well. And we can balance these two needs and kind of create a balance at the core of who we are by having certainty and uncertainty balanced out. And then the next of the six core needs is significance. And this is the need to have meaning, to feel wanted, a sense of importance, maybe worthy of love, to feel special and to have something to be proud of in your life. Significance. We talked about how we can meet these needs in a healthy or unhealthy manner. If if I'm, you know, maybe I was raised in such a way where I didn't feel significant and then I go and maybe become a criminal and put a gun to your head and try to rob you in some dark alley somewhere. God forbid. But in that very moment, I become the most significant thing uh, in the world for the people involved because here I am threatening your life. So that's, I would dare say, an unhealthy approach to getting significance. And then there's more healthy approaches as well to having significance and value in our lives and learning your own value in, in the process. The next, this is the fourth of the six core needs is love and connection. This is the need for approval and attachment to feel connected and loved and even intimate with other human beings, to feel unity and close, healthy channels of communication. I think that's pretty straightforward and I think it's pretty safe to say that all or most of us have that need to connect and to have those people around us to connect with. The uh, last two are, again, these these needs of the spirit, as we talked about growth, the need for constant uh, intellectual, emotional, spiritual growth and development. I think that's pretty straightforward. We talk about that in our challenges with studying and things like that in these episodes of the podcast as well. And the final one is contribution. This is the need to protect and serve and help others, to give beyond ourselves, to care for others we need to feel like we have some meaning, purpose, contribution in the world. So like, like we said with this need for significance, it's a good example to talk about how we can meet these needs in a healthy manner and an un- unhealthy manner. We talked about putting a gun to someone's head. All, all of a sudden, you're the most significant thing for that moment. Gossiping, putting other people down, creating a situation where maybe you're a victim or something, maybe exaggerating things. All these things become ways where you become significant. Maybe in an unhealthy manner, I would submit, but also There's healthy ways to meet these needs. So think about how that applies for you. Think about how you unleash these needs in your lives and also how you do that with maybe having one or two core needs that may be kind of the go-to thing. Maybe you need to just feel certainty more than anything. That's why you're always balancing the checkbook or doing whatever it is that you do. I'm not mocking anything people do, but get to know yourself. And again, as we talk about mapping out our lives and taking control where we're not just following some paradigm, it's good to learn. We've talked about modeling from others in previous recent episodes, even about finding someone who has something you want out of life and maybe what they did and continue to do to have and maintain that and then following some of those steps and modeling. But at the same time, you've got to get to know yourself. You have to find out maybe what makes you tick, what you're passionate about, what your talents are. And many of these are unique to you specifically. You may be good at playing guitar, but you may have your own style that makes your guitar playing different than everybody else or whatever it is. These are just examples. Find out what makes you tick, what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and and then see how these human needs apply as we've already mentioned. Now, as we wrap up, we're going to talk about these challenges. Study. If you haven't been studying, start studying. Keep studying. Keep learning, growing. I'm, we're about middle of the year as I record this, and I've, I'm up to about 29 or 30 books for the year, listening mostly, reading books. This was one of my own kind of challenges to myself. I would offer you the same challenge as well. Try to get through a book a week. It's not hard if you're listening. Sometimes, like I've said in the past, I increase the speed. You can get through it quicker, understand it still, and you can get through these books and continue to learn biographies, whatever in conjunction with what we find out about who we are as people that you find value in, biographies, uh, even fiction, but uh, whatever it is, self-help material, find something that you can study and learn and grow and continue to progress. Because if we're not progressing, we're regressing, we're not going the right direction. So that's the first. And then also make great moments, make people know that they matter in their lives. That's kind of the secret to make great moments. Show people that they matter, surprise them, love them as a verb, 
even just a simple thing as as a hug at the right moment the right person the right setting that's up to your discretion <laughs> hugs uh, the right affection again the right setting but make people matter make great moments and show that love as a verb don't just let it exist as a noun because if it just exists as a noun again it won't continue to progress so make great moments surprise people make great things happen in these relationships that we ought to treasure and cherish in our lives and again the last of the challenges is let's keep doing this podcast together I'm so grateful for you. I'm so flattered that you share this time with me and listen to these episodes. And as we continue forward, I've got a lot of exciting things going on. I haven't announced things yet on a lot of these things that we're working on, but there's a lot of different things coming. There's not just a podcast. And so stay tuned for all that and continue to share your light and the things you learn here and in other places with all the people you care about and others around you. That's why we always say, and we're going to wrap up here until next time, empower yourself empower the world around you thanks so much for listening to empower humans if you enjoyed the show please rate and review this podcast for more great content and to stay up to date visit empowerhumans.com we'll catch you next time